Hey everyone, in today's video, I wanna show you how to use Brave and it's an internet browser for browsing the web. So you probably have in the past used something like Safari if you use iPhones or Macs, or maybe you use Chrome if you use Android devices, or maybe you use Firefox. Well, Brave is sort of like that. It's an internet browser just like those things are, but it actually has a very different spin to the business model of web browsing. So I'm gonna kinda of explain that as we go through this video, but I really wanted to also show you exactly how to use it. And I'll focus on the mobile app here on the iPhone, but there are some minor differences on the Android, so I'll point those out as well. And then you will have a good understanding how to use it on the computer too. So you do have to download it for different devices. It's an app for the mobile devices and it's an app on your computer too. So I'll put some resources in the description because I'm not gonna fully cover everything there is to know, but I'll cover the most important things here. And there is a link in the description to brave.com. You could just click that and it will recognize your device and let you download the app. And let me point out a few things here. So according to the website, this browser, the Brave browser, is faster than other browsers and it uses less battery on mobile devices. So if you have it on your iPhone or your Android phone, it's gonna use less batteries here. And one of the things Brave basically is intended to do is just stop tracking you across the web. So typically Brave is saying that your internet activity is being tracked so different websites could deliver ads to you that are targeted to you, right? So they wanna understand your identity, your behavior online, so they could give you focused ads, so you're more likely to click on the ad and buy the thing they're recommending, right? But Brave actually wants to change all that. They don't want the internet to work that way. They want you to browse the web and not get ads that are specific to you, okay? So it just blocks harmful ads like that, automatically what it calls harmful ads. So as you can see, blocks data grabbing ads and trackers, okay? So you could browse the web freely that way. That's kind of the biggest thing that I've noticed with Brave that other browsers don't really focus on as much. And it says it's six times faster when it comes to loading major news sites than Chrome, Safari, and Firefox on mobile and desktop. And towards the end, I'll mention something called Brave Rewards, which is really a mind-blowing concept of how it actually rewards the creators that are creating content on the web like myself. So I'll show you that in a little bit. So again, click on the link below, come to Brave here, and then get it for your mobile device. If you have Android or iPhone, go ahead and download and open it. And there's a few things depending on your device that it's gonna ask you to do. I just skipped through those so I could show you the actual interface here and what you're looking at. It's very, very simple. On top, you have a search bar. This is where you type in your keyword or the website you wanna to go to, right over here, pretty simple. That option is also available in the search icon over here. Okay, so if I search YouTube, for example, I could type it out here, and it's gonna do a Google search here of YouTube. Now, you could actually change what kind of a search result you get here, so let me show you that. And let me press the three dots here so I could show you the settings because we do want to change or potentially change our default search engine. You could actually do that here. So by default, actually when I set it up, I chose Google as the standard search engine, but you could use a different search engine here, okay? So standard tab could be something else, not Google. Maybe you wanna use DuckDuckGo. Private tab could also be DuckDuckGo. I'll show you what a private tab is. So DuckDuckGo, if you don't know what it is, it's a different search engine than Google, and I have a different video covering DuckDuckGo the mission of DuckDuckGo is kind of similar to Brave, so I thought I'd mention it here because they also don't like to track you on the web from your web searches. So if you press this one icon right here, this one option, you could see all your different tabs, right? So you could come back and forth. You could open a private tab. Now, private tabs are basically tabs that don't keep track on this app of your browsing history. Now you could read all about it here. So if someone else is using the app, they won't see what you did as a private browser if you use this option. The regular browsing will just save some things for you here if you're the only one using the app. This really doesn't have much to do with what you're doing online. It's really based on what the app is keeping track of. You could always press the plus sign here to open a brand new tab and then I could do a new search. And if you look on top now, I have two different tabs open. 
right? The YouTube page I went to and here, but now let me type in YouTube and see what happens. Now I use DuckDuckGo to search for YouTube instead of Google, which was the default, okay? And you can see if I press this, I have two different tabs open and anytime I could go back and forth. So this is taking me back and forth. Now that's one of the biggest differences in the Android device. Let me show you this. If you look at the Android device, just the bottom menu is a little bit different. So you could bookmark and go to the home page, but the rest are pretty much identical to what you see over here. You also don't get these default recommendations of websites here on the Google version. Now there's this other thing. If you press the settings option over here, it's called Brave VPN. Let me just show you what this means. So VPN, every mobile device or every computer, every house has an IP address with a VPN that basically blocks that connection and lets you connect with a different IP address through a VPN. Okay. And I have completely separate videos on VPNs and what they do. So I won't go through it here, but basically this has a built-in VPN for VPNs. You do have to pay though. So this is the one you have to pay to activate a VPN for anonymous online activity. Okay. So with a VPN, there are different options than what Brave gives you. You could actually get one for your whole phone here and I have it on all my devices and I use NordVPN. I'll put a link in the description. If you want to support this channel, you could use my link there and it's a little bit cheaper than this. It's actually much cheaper than this. I think if you sign up uh, for a year or so. Now the big revolutionary thing with Brave that I really found fascinating is the way that it actually rewards the creators and you as a user. Brave for browsing the internet actually gives you money in a form of a token, which is a digital currency called BAT, B-A-T, basic attention token. Now, this is how it works. If you use Brave on your computer and your mobile device and you do regular browsing of the internet and you won't see any ads, you won't get anything. But you could turn on ads. Now, these are not the harmful ads that it mentioned in the beginning. Basically, these are just ads that are not specific to you. They're not showing you specific ads based on tracking you. These are just regular ads on the web. If you allow those ads to be shown, you are going to earn bats or basic attention tokens. Now, what do you do with those tokens? Well, you could use them to tip creators on the platform. So people that create things on the web, so let me show you how to turn it on. So basically anybody that publishes content on the internet could get paid this way. They could sign up as a creator on here. But if you click this icon right here, it says brave reward. Okay. So if you turn this on, it's going to help you or it's going to help the creators that make content on the web to get paid. So those creators could actually go to brave.com and sign up as a creator. And then those tokens will be transferred to them, a portion of those tokens. So I know it's a really new concept and I haven't seen anything that works this way, but basically you browse the internet as you would typically do using the brave app. As long as you have the brave rewards turned on, you get paid in bat basic attention tokens. Then in turn, because you want to support the creators that give you value, you could actually go ahead and tip those creators through this platform. And this basically lets you really support creators that you like and then avoid the ones you don't like. Because typically right now on the internet, most creators get paid by ads, right? So when the ads get blocked, you want to support them a different way. And that's by using this token that is designed for this purpose. So if you go to my website here, for example, and watch videos or just browse around using Brave, as long as you have that turned on, the, the rewards, then I could get paid if I sign up as a creator on Brave. So just to recap, one of the biggest benefits of Brave browser is the fact that you don't really get to see ads that are targeted to you because it's not really tracking you. You could actually use DuckDuckGo in combination as your default search engine if you want, or leave it on Google if you want to do your searches with Google if you find better results there. And you have something called Brave Tokens where you could earn tokens and then use those tokens to tip your favorite creators within the app. And there's a lot more. So I'll put a link again to brave.com and they have a really good FAQ section that answers pretty much everything. 
Okay, so I went through it and I didn't want to make this video an hour long, so you could actually go through that. Any specific questions you have, I think they did a really good job covering it. They also go in detail of their team and you could see all the pictures of the different members from the CEO to their technical people on their website. It's based out of San Francisco. Really cool company. I really like this app and so far I've only used it for a few days, but I'm going to continue to use it to see how it stacks up with other browsers like Chrome and Firefox and Safari that I'm used to using. I hope you found this useful. Again, make sure you check out the description for all the resources that I mentioned and I hope to catch you next time.